Hi, this is Wayne Zell, and welcome to Blueprint for Wealth and another educational moment designed to help you realize your personal dreams of wealth and freedom. Today's moment is on non-compete agreements and why the Federal Trade Commission is banning them. First of all, what is a non-compete agreement? Well, it's an agreement, a contract that prevents an employee or a former employee from working for a competitor or starting a competing business for a certain period of time within a certain geographic area after leaving a job. But how do we define the term non-compete? Well, it's if someone is seeking or accepting work in the same field in the U.S. with a different person or different company from where they were working before they left, or operating a business in the same field in the United States after concluding employment, which may include the non-compete term. Why is this an issue now? Back in 2021, the government issued an executive order announcing that they intended to pursue this ban on non-competes. And the proponents of the rule say that the ban is going to promote competition increase wages, and help foster innovation by allowing employees to move freely between jobs without restriction. Critics of the ban say that the ban is going to potentially create a negative impact on a business's ability to protect its own trade secrets, its confidential information, and its customers. And it's going to make long-term investments in their workforce more expensive and harder to sustain. What is the new FTC rule? It was issued on April 23rd of 2024, and the FTC finalized a rule that bans employers from enforcing a non-compete agreement against most workers. When does the rule become effective? It's scheduled to become effective on September 4th of 2024. However, there may be legal challenges in court that would prevent the initiation of the rule and delay its implementation. One question we've been getting is, are there exceptions to the FTC's non-compete ban? Yes, but they're fairly narrow. For example, an executive manager who has an existing non-compete agreement and who is in a policy-making position and makes more than $151,000 a year is exempt from the ban, and therefore the employer can enforce a non-compete, but it has to be in existence. Employers cannot issue new non-compete agreements to such senior executive managers after the effective date of the rule. Another exception is you can have a non-compete and it is enforceable if it's in connection with a bona fide sale of a business. Does that include all sales of the business, its assets, the ownership interests in the business? The general thought is yes, but we're waiting for more guidance. Another exemption from the rule is the ban does not apply to non-solicitation or non-disclosure agreements. So you can have a non-solicitation agreement that prevents an employee from taking your employees or your customers or clients. You can also have a valid non-disclosure agreement that prevents them from taking and using your, your confidential information or trade secrets. Another exemption is for a pre-existing claim under an existing non-compete agreement. So a, an enforcement action to uphold the non-compete was filed against the employee before the effective date of the rule. That will still be allowed to be pursued in court subject to state law restrictions. And then certain industries are exempt from the non-compete rule, such as banks, savings and loans, and nonprofit organizations. How is the FTC ban on non-competes going to help employees? Well, the proponents say that it's going to increase job mobility and wage growth and create increased opportunities for career advancement for employees. 
employers need to provide notice to employees under this new rule. Each worker who's subject to a non-compete that is now in violation of the rule, as long as the employer has the employee's mailing address, email address, or cell phone number must be given notice. So the mailing address can be done through the regular mail, email, or texting over the cell phone. How can the business protect itself if it can't use a non-compete anymore? And this is one of the greatest fears of my business clients. Well, draft really strong and enforceable non-disclosure agreements. Have good and enforceable non-solicitation agreements that prevent former employees from taking customers or clients or employees for a specified period of time. Limited use agreements are applicable. And you can use the Defend Trade Secrets Act to enforce a protection of your trade secrets in your business. And then there's a concept known as garden leave clauses, which are referenced in the rule. You can also claw back any payment that you've made for an employee's training if they leave and violate a non-compete agreement where you can basically recover the money that you've paid for their training. How is the FTC rule going to affect large and small businesses? Well, for the large businesses, it's going to increase competition from former employees who go out and start competing business or join rivals. For the small business clients and for the small businesses out there, the ruling may make it easier for them to hire talent from larger companies and foster more competition and innovation, but it prevents them from using enforceable non-compete agreements that they may have used in the past. So is this the end of the line for non-competes? It's a very contentious issue, which is leading to litigation in many courts around the country, challenging the FTC's authority, either constitutionally or administratively, to issue this rule. It's at the intersection of the need to protect businesses and their investment in customers and confidential information and promoting employee freedom and innovation. If you've got more questions about how this new rule might affect you, look us up on the web at zelllaw.com and we'll be happy to try to assist you or refer you to a litigator if you need one. This has been Wayne Zell and thank you. We'll see you next time on another educational moment from Blueprint for Wealth and Zell Law.